everybody. So um, below this video, that you should see a getting started contributing guide, and that's for Etherpad and how to get started with Etherpad. Uh, I'm going to just read through some of the topics and give you a bit of a brief overview of my thoughts on them. Um, and it'll hopefully save you kind of reading through the whole thing because it's probably a little bit laborious and boring. Um, so the first thing on the list is writing blog posts. So that's basically uh, logging into WordPress, writing content, and either sending it to us as HTML, and then we'll publish it. We'll review it and publish it, obviously. Um, or uh, if we're comfortable with you and your writing style, um, you know, be yourself. Uh, put your put your own uh, personality into it. We're not going to have any beef with anybody that does that. So uh, yeah, we'd love to see more people writing blog. Uh, guest blog posts and publish them on blog.etherpad.org you might be a plugin author you might be a researcher uh, you might be a user and you just want to tell people about your user experience we're, we're really keen on getting people connected as much as possible so yeah blog posts would be great if we can get more people writing them next thing is uh, etherpadians on social media so this is just basically people that are using social media already you know people either using whatever you use i don't care uh, particularly uh, you may be one of the six people that use google plus and you know good for you um we just need basically people to be talking about Etherpad, sharing the word, getting you know getting uh, responses from people, and basically just trying to engage people on social media. Uh, if you go down that road and you're happy there, then please promote Etherpad on social media, no matter you know what you're doing. Um, next thing is just answering questions. So this is looking at stuff like Quora and Stack Overflow and all of these QA websites, and um, where people are asking questions. You can probably get an email alert when a new Etherpad thing comes through. Um, if you can go on and just answer questions, they tend to be really basic, like how do I export to HTML and stuff like that. Uh, it's great if you can, you know, find a question, do like a video tutorial and a guide, and we'll publish it on blog.etherpad.org, and we'll help promote it on social media. So all of those things tie really well in together. Um, next thing is running tests and replicating issues. So this is basically if user A or if somebody posts an issue on a GitHub, so an issue of a bug. Uh, we just need people to test them just to say, yep, that, that bug does exist. Yes, I can replicate that or no, I can't. Um, we tend to spend about half of our time just trying to replicate stuff that people are saying is a bug but really isn't. And um, from a, if you're doing any software development, that can be a bit of a time suck. So it's great if we can get people just you know doing the low-hanging fruit of just saying, oh, I can replicate this on this Firefox or IE or you know whatever um, is showing the bug. Um, that'd be great. So more people doing that, and then um, when a fix does come through as well, if you can test a fix, and there was it's some basic Git knowledge required for testing fixes, but it's only minor, um, and I think the, the developer will be happy to talk you through once or twice until you get familiar with it, and then you should be able to just do it yourself from there. Next thing is tutorial and demonstration videos. So that's basically where. Um, um, we need somebody to understand the topic and we need somebody to create a video to explain you know how to use a ball button how to use the um, italic how to use the time slider those kind of basic things um, it's really simple uh, it's just a great way of explaining stuff to people um, it kind of ties in with that whole social media and communicating with people and casting lenses and stuff uh, next thing is writing plugins so we're starting to get a little bit more advanced now now writing plugins does require some uh, development skills uh, also requires some basic fundamental knowledge of how etherpad works um best way to get started with that is to look at the ones that are in my repo uh, which is github.com slash john mcclear um there's also some great uh plugins that we link to in the topic paragraph section whatever you want to call it um, have a look through those and just start hacking and writing your own. Do a hello world first one, you know, maybe look at some of the basic button ones. Uh, handling and working with Ace can be a bit tricky and it does take a little while to get used to. Um, but hopefully there's enough examples where you should be able to look at them and see, oh, this is how they did it and this is performance, so I'm going to use that style. Next thing, uh, contributing code. So this is contributing code to core. Uh, we have quite a hefty, kind of ish, hefty ish. Uh, guidelines for contributing to core um, basically pull requests to develop um, uh, if you aren't already familiar with git um, you'll have to be familiar with git you'll have to be familiar with javascript node um, but basically find a bug fix a bug I'll put a pull request to develop and we'll review and merge it in um, there's no need to have lengthy conversations beforehand create an issue maybe a week before and say you know I'm gonna work on it and this is my proposal that's perfect if you do create issue uh, this is my proposal for fix. Here's my branch that contains a fix. Here's the status, and then do periodic status updates over two or three days. It gives us time to just give you a little bit of feedback, um, 
to how things are progressing and just to make sure that you follow in the coding conventions and stuff like that. Uh, next thing is marketing. Um, so we, you know, we're not a big, big marketing type uh, group or foundation or anything like that. But it's great when we see infographics and, and uh, uh, just different ways of visualizing how Etherpad can be useful. Um, it ties in with all this kind of uh, question answer stuff that we were talking about earlier. Uh, but yeah, if we get, you know, infographics and if we get, uh, you know, general artwork and stuff like that, where we can put on social media and videos and kind of it's like just to help promote um the message of Etherpad and, and what it is and, and what it stands for and, and why it's important to users and how they can use it. Those kind of things are always great. Uh, next thing is providing translations. We already have masses of translation coverage thanks to the guys over at Translate Wiki, um, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, we'd like to support more of Asia um, and uh, yeah, other countries that we that don't support. I just know that Asia as a whole that we, we lack at the moment. Um, so if you do speak other languages more than one, uh, jump over to Translate Wiki and just get in through that. And they, basically they handle that whole process and then it gets pulled through to us periodically. Uh, it's really great. It's really simple uh, if you know more than one language, obviously. Uh, next thing is writing tests. Um, so this is test coverage of core. Um, you could also do some tests of um, test coverage of plugins if you wanted as well. So uh, writing test does have some uh, hurdles. Our test framework isn't great. It needs refactoring and rewriting really, but um, we do need more front end test coverage. And uh, so if you are competent with JavaScript jQuery, then just jump in, look at the tests that exist already, copy paste and make some more. Um, it's great when tests get written for issues and then we close an issue and the test then starts passing. Uh, that's a good feeling for everybody. Everybody sees green tick boxes, and you know that's that makes for happy developers because we get that kind of completionist thing going on. Uh, next thing is security testing. So we've had security audit done, and we do reasonably well on security. We've still got a long way to go, um, but we we need more people to help us do pen testing uh, and attack Etherpad, and then do uh, responsible disclosure. So submit a patch. Um, open pull request, we'll merge it in, we'll do an, uh, then we'll handle it from our end using our secure, uh, security uh, disclosure policy. Um, so if you are, you know, somebody that works in the field of security and you could help out with that, then that'd be amazing. Um, next thing is releasing new versions. Uh, we periodically release new versions. This is quite time consuming. It takes about half an hour or an hour of our time uh, every time we do a new release. Um, but it's a really straightforward kind of copy paste process. We've not been able to automate it yet. It's something we'd like to do. But for now, we have to create like the readme's manually and stuff like that. And I don't think that's going to change because we tend to take the technical terms that we've used in the pull requests and then we change them into uh, more humanly readable terms when we put it into the change log. This is all fully documented. Uh, there's about 10 or 15 points uh, and, and there's a full release procedure for, for how to actually do a release. So yeah, look at the release procedure if you think you're gonna be comfortable doing it. Um, just basically get skills required. Um, we'd love for, to have somebody on board that just handled our, our uh, releases for us because I think we'd release like once a week instead of once a month or whatever we're managing to average at the moment. So, And then the final one is just general foundation admin. We get a lot of emails just saying, who do I need to speak to about, uh, you know, maybe do some contract work around the front end test code or who do I need to speak to about uh, sponsorship or, uh, you know, some sort of legal requests, you know, use of copyright, trademark and stuff like that. We get those quite frequently and it's nice. It'd be nice if we could have um, just an admin person or somebody that's comfortable just handling general requests that um, they're then familiar with the different people inside of the Etherpad Foundation that they can then contact and uh, share that request with and hopefully get some sort of resolution. So that's everything. There's lots of other stuff um, that we do need help with. It's been a bit of a, a rapid ramble video. Um, hopefully you can help and hopefully you can uh, spread the Etherpad, word about Etherpad and, and get other Etherpadians involved. Um, we are an open source uh, charitable foundation and um, obviously that means that we don't have uh, um, lots of uh, funds that we can throw at things, but we do get some sponsorship and we do run some events. So. Yeah, get in touch um, and we're looking forward to you as part of the family.